The wars between the Ptolemaic Empire of Egypt and the Seleucid Empire had gone on for decades. During this time period, two wars erupted under Seleucus II, the Third Syrian War, which was shortly followed by the War Brothers. But have we been wrong about these two wars? Do we know exactly all the ins and outs? And why were there so many, and what were their causes? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the AIQ podcast. My name is Alexander Goodman and today on this podcast we are talking about the Syrian wars. What was the point? Before we get into it, I just want to announce that we are going to launch our Patreon page when this podcast is released. Um, If you go over there, you can pledge some money each month and it will help the podcast grow uh, with audio equipment and visuals. But if you become a patron, you will have a direct impact onto the podcast and you can put ideas forward about what you would like to see in the podcast and that we can cover. If you want to pledge a little bit more, um, it's a $5 a month, you'll be able to get two separate audio podcasts that are 10 minutes long each and they'll be on other topics around each of the podcast's episodes. So today's episode, you'll be getting one on Roman intervention in the Hellenistic world and you'll be getting one on the Battle of Raphia. So, what were the Syrian Wars? Well, they were a series of wars fought over roughly a hundred year period between the two Macedonian successor kingdoms, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. The Seleucids had their main power base in Syria and Mesopotamia, and the Ptolemies had their main power bases in Egypt. Another thing to say is that due to the Hellenistic naming traditions, the kings of these two kingdoms, for the most part, all had very similar names and sometimes had the same name. So if you get confused, just so you know, so we can stay on track, anyone with the name Antiochus or Seleucus, we are referring to the Seleucid Empire, and anyone who's got the name Ptolemy, we're talking about the Ptolemaic Empire, which is Egypt. So let's have a brief overview of the wars, and of course we have to start at the beginning, the First Syrian War. So this war dated from 274 BC to 272 BC, probably. And I say probably because scholarship is debating this and different scholars have different opinions. It could have ended in 272 BC or 271 BC. Um, But the war was between Ptolemy II and Antiochus I. Both were the two kings who succeeded the original kings of their empires. So the main reason for this war was that Antiochus I sought to expand his control in Syria and Asia Minor, which large parts of it was controlled by the Ptolemaic Empire. Initially, Antiochus was met with great success as Magas, who was the king of Cyrene, had invaded Egypt in 274 BC. Because Magas was such a problem for the Ptolemies, Antiochus was able to take large parts of Ptolemaic Syria and Asia Minor, including the conquest of Damascus, which is a very important city. However, Ptolemy was quickly able to expel Magas and then launch naval attacks against the Seleucid ports, which forced Antiochus to retreat. Ptolemy then set about reconquering all the land he had lost and by 271 BC had reconquered the lost territories in Asia Minor and had even expanded his control all the way up to Caria, which is where Ephesus is, and held the majority of Cilicia. So that concluded the First Syrian War and it's pretty obvious that the Ptolemies won this overall because they managed to expand their influence outside of their normal areas and they got to recapture and retake all the land that the Seleucids took over them. So the Ptolemies are definitely winning the Syrian War so far. But that brings us on to the Second Syrian War and this is dated from 260 to 253 BC and it's between Antiochus II and Ptolemy II. Antiochus II quickly succeeded his father Antiochus I in 261 BC and sought quickly to reignite the Syrian war. He sought aid from Antigonus II, the king of Macedon, who wished to push Ptolemy II's influence out of the Aegean. They both had similar agendas when it came to the Ptolemies. With this support from the Macedonians, Antiochus launched attacks on Ptolemaic lands in Asia Minor. In 258 BC, Antigonus' fleet defeated Ptolemy at the Battle of Kos, destroying Ptolemaic naval ability. Ptolemy II seemed to have lost ground in areas such as Cilicia, Pamphylia and Ionia in Asia Minor, whilst Antiochus made gains in Asia Minor, capturing Miletus and Ephesus. In 253 BC, Antigonus left the war due to revolts, potentially started by Ptolemy II, and an increase in activity on their northern border. 
In the same year the war ended with Antiochus marrying Ptolemy's daughter Berenice Syra, which led to Antiochus abandoning his previous wife Laodicea, although this idea of him abandoning Laodicea is often disputed now by scholars. It's clear then from the Second Syrian War that territorially the Seleucids has definitely won this, this war. However, what's interesting is he's married into the Ptolemaic family, which we'll talk about later, but which may indicate maybe he didn't actually win the war so much. However, we must go on now to the Third Syrian War, which erupted in 246 BC and lasted until 241 BC, and this was fought between Seleucus II and Ptolemy III. The war essentially started due to Ptolemaic involvement in the Seleucid succession crisis following the death of Antiochus II. To really oversimplify it, you can say Laodice, the wife of Antiochus II, had two children, Seleucus II and Antiochus, later known as Hyrax. Then he had a second wife, Berenike, who was the sister of Ptolemy III, and he had a son with her too. So when he died, Laodice pronounced that her eldest son, Seleucus, should be king, but Antiochus, his brother, contested that claim. Berenike also claimed that her son was a legitimate heir. So as you can see, it's getting quite confusing here, with three figures coming up and claiming their legitimacy. Berenike thus decided to ask her brother Ptolemy III to come to Antioch to ensure her child would be made king of the Seleucid Empire. But when he got there, Berenike and the child had already been assassinated. So, as you would, he went back to Egypt and declared war against Seleucus II. And he blamed him for the death of the mother and of the child. Ptolemy immediately began campaigning into Seleucid territory with astonishing success. Recent evidence has even shown that he got as far as Babylon, which is an amazing feat. The Seleucids were unable to mount any significant resistance, as Seleucus II had been coerced by his mother into giving the rule of Seleucid Asia Minor to his brother Antiochus Hyrax. Hyrax promptly declared his independence, and this greatly weakened any chance of effective Seleucid resistance against the Ptolemies. The war ended with the Seleucids ceding several coastal areas in northern Syria to the Ptolemies. Following this war, if you believe the traditional chronology is correct for this time period, Seleucus II then engaged in conflict with his brother Hyrax in the War of Brothers. However, this chronology recently has been questioned, which we'll come back to later and discuss more. So the Ptolemies clearly won this war. They went right into the heartland of, Se of the Seleucid Empire and they were at the height of their power during this time. They had never reached a height like this and they never got to another height like this uh, during the Ptolemaic uh, control of Egypt. So this height of Ptolemaic uh, power now changes when we get into the Fourth Syrian War. And this war started in 219 BC to 217 BC. And it was between Antiochus III and Ptolemy IV. This is another war which began because of Seleucid desire for expansion. Antiochus III took to the throne in 223 BC and set about to regain all of the imperial territory of the Seleucid Empire. By 221 BC, he had regained the revolting provinces of Media and Persia, and then sought to take Kole Syria from the Ptolemies. The Egyptian court was greatly weakened as the new king Ptolemy IV was, according to Polybius, a ruler who was not really concerned with governing, and so left this to the various ministers of his court. The ministers, however, worked for their own interests rather than the kingdoms, which caused the kingdom to lack stability. In 219 BC, Antiochus took advantage of this situation and the lack of Ptolemaic st stability and launched an invasion of Kole Syria, as well as other parts of Syria that were controlled by the Ptolemies. He had immediate early success with the reconquest of Seleucia Pyria and the number of port cities in Kole Syria. However, instead of pushing on into Egypt, he chose to try and consolidate his holdings over Kole Syria. This gave the Ptolemies time to raise an army, which marched into Kole Syria to meet the Seleucids. This resulted in one of the largest battles in the Hellenistic period, the Battle of Raphia in 217 BC, which you can go see on Patreon if you become a Tier 2 subscriber. The Ptolemaic force ultimately won this battle, and so the Seleucids retreated, and the Ptolemies regained control over Kole Syria. However, Ptolemy IV neglected to retake other lost territories, such as Seleucia Pyria. 
So as we can see from this war, the Ptolemies had managed to lose large parts of their empire, going from the strongest of their time period to then being in a very weak and unstable position. They managed to gain some back, but the Seleucids really were the benefiters from this campaign and managed to take regions that they didn't have prior. So the Fifth Syrian War starts in 202 BC and goes on to 195 BC, and this is started by Antiochus III and Ptolemy V. The Fifth Syrian War came from the defeat of the Fourth, and they very much are linked. Antiochus III, after recapturing his eastern provinces and seeing the turmoil in Egypt with the death of Ptolemy IV, and Ptolemy V coming to the throne as only a child, meant Antiochus turned his attention to Ptolemaic control over Asia Minor and Coelosyria once again. In 202 BC, Seleucid forces invaded Coelosyria, whilst Macedonian forces from Philip V of Macedon invaded Asia Minor. This invasion from Macedon led to the start of the Second Macedonian War with Rome. Antiochus swiftly pushed through Ptolemaic lands in Syria, with only Gaza being a significant setback. Seleucids and Ptolemaic forces clashed at the Battle of Panium, which saw a devastating blow to Ptolemy V near the River Jordan. With this victory secured, Antiochus gained the port of Sidon, which is a very important coastal base. In 200 BC, an agreement was signed between Antiochus, Philip and Rome to avoid an invasion of Egypt, as it would disrupt the Roman grain trade. This was accepted by all parties, and the complete conquest of Kole Syria by the Seleucids was completed in 198 BC. Antiochus now continued to raid Ptolemaic areas in Asia Minor until the war was concluded in 195 BC as Ptolemy sought to end the war due to internal strife with Egyptian rebels. This secured Antiochus' control over Kole Syria and Ptolemy had to marry Antiochus' daughter Cleopatra I. It is very clear to see that this is actually one of the few wars that the Seleucids completely win. Not only have they taken large portions of territory and they've had to get the Ptolemies to sign peace agreements, they've also got the current king, Ptolemy V, to marry into the Seleucid family through Cleopatra I. So we're now on to the final war, the Sixth Syrian War. It is dated from 170 BC to 168 BC, and it's be between Antiochus IV and a combination of Ptolemy VI, Ptolemy VII, and Cleopatra II. The causes of this war are not really known, as they are not stated in any surviving works. However, the course of the war is still of great importance. So the war began when the two regents, for Ptolemy VI, declared war against the Seleucids. In the same year, Ptolemy VII and Cleopatra II were declared as co-rulers, alongside their older brother, Ptolemy VI, to increase stability. The Egyptians, however, quickly came to regret their declaration of war, as Antiochus quickly gained the upper hand as he invaded Egypt. Antiochus also gained control of his nephew, Ptolemy VI, which gave him effective control over the whole of Egypt, as he controlled the king. However, the people in Alexandria deemed this unacceptable, so they declared Ptolemy VII as sole king. In response to this, Antiochus began taking control of more and more Ptolemaic territory. It is at this point the war took a rather unusual turn we haven't seen yet in the Syrian wars. The Ptolemies sent envoys to Rome asking for help direct help from the empire. And as Antiochus began marching towards Alexandria, he was met by a Roman consul, Gaius Popilius Linus. The Roman consul then issued him with an ultimatum. He had to choose whether to return all the territory that was taken from the Ptolemies, or face war with Rome. Antiochus asked for some time to consider his options, but Papilius instead drew a circle around him in the sand and said that he must give an answer to him before he leaves the circle. Thus Antiochus chose to return home and the war ended with no territorial changes. It is clear that this is the best opportunity the Seleucids had to actually conquer Egypt, or at least taking vast amounts of land, but it was squandered by Rome. And at this point, Rome was not a small state at all. It was a very powerful nation, and I think the Seleucids really understood that. If they went to war with Rome, it could have meant the end. Antiochus III had already had a massive defeat from Rome, and I don't think his son, Antiochus IV, wanted to go through the same fate. 
so that's a brief overview of the wars and I'm sorry if we went for that a bit quick there are quite a few of them and a bit bit detail you have to explain so one thing we didn't really explore is why are these two big empires that derive from the same place they're both offshoots of the Macedonian Empire from Alexander the Great why are these empires at war let's try and find out so this mainly probably comes down to how they interacted with each other and we can do see this over a few points so, so the first one is how the two royal families would interact and how their relations were so during the Syrian wars it is evident that both empires the Seleucids and the Ptolemies constantly wished to reignite the conflict and it is also clear that both monarchies wished to see themselves as the, as the victor however this may not have just been on the battlefield as politics played a huge role in the motivations, but also these treaties at the end of the conflicts. At the end of the wars, each monarch would have desperately wanted to show their superiority over the other, whether that was through monetary payments, territorial changes or marriages. It was quite normal for the loser to take the bride of another monarch's family, which might not seem to hold much meaning now, but in the Hellenistic period it symbolises one person coming into another household, and therefore becoming inferior to the other. An example of this is during the Second Syrian War, where Antiochus II married into Ptolemy II's family through his daughter Berenike Syrah. This would have made Antiochus II, the king of the Seleucid Empire, inferior to Ptolemy II, which would have had far-reaching consequences to his image. These political marriages then provided the cause to further wars, as in the Third Syrian War, where Ptolemy III declared at war against the Seleucids to avenge the murder of his sister Berenike Syra who had supposedly been murdered by either Laodice, the previous wife of Antiochus II, Seleucus II, Antiochus' eldest son, or some pro-Seleucid officials who sought to weaken Ptolemaic power in the Seleucid Empire. Although this again has been disputed as the actual reason for the war in recent scholarship, which we will discuss later on in this podcast. So we can see that the way these two royal families interacted and the, the, how their relationship worked could very well be a big cause of why there are so many wars, but also why they keep reigniting and restarting. Marriages and political power plays really do play a big point in this time period. The second topic we're going to touch on is expansionism and imperialism. And this can be seen in both empires, as both empires always sought to grow and push their sphere of influence outside their original locations, with two areas being a hotbed for confrontation, and that is Asia Minor and Kole Syria. Kole Syria was a pivotal area to have naval superiority in the eastern Mediterranean, with important ports along the coast such as Tyre, Sidon and Tripolis. It also held an area of pride and heritage, as both empires had held this territory and as we had seen, six separate wars were fought over a space of around about 100 years for this region. Control over Asia Minor was contested throughout the whole Hellenistic time period. Control over and expansion into this region was highly sought after due to its geographical location, with three kingdoms with realistic locations to invade. So you had Macedon from the west, the Seleucids from the east, and the Ptolemies via the sea from the south. It also held a large population and could be used to bolster income and manpower for each empire. However, what comes with that then is once you've expanded into this land, it's more than likely you're going to lose it at some point. And this is our last aspect of why these wars keep happening. And it is the need to reconquer lost land. So as previously mentioned, these areas held an emotional aspect to them. Each monarch had a sense of pride over controlling these areas. And it would make one monarch look like they're in higher esteem or better than the others. Therefore, when land was lost, and it was lost a lot, monarchs would make a large effort to reclaim this land, as Antiochus III did in the Fifth Syrian War, after he failed to take control of Kole Syria in the Fourth Syrian War. This emotional claim can also be seen by other monarchs who tried to reclaim the land their fathers lost, probably to regain honour for their empire or to increase their own honour and legacy to their rule. This can be seen by Antiochus II in the Second Syrian War. It is clear that the need to reclaim the lost land, expand their empires and the constant squabbling 
with other dynasties could have easily continued this tradition of conflict between the Seleucids and the Ptolemies due to the desires of the kings and the empires at the time. So this next bit of discussion I want to talk about is not actually about the um, the kind of the reasons and the point of the Syrian wars as such, but I really want to talk about the chronology of the Third Syrian War because I think it's actually really important, not just to the Syrian wars as a whole, but also how we look at the Hellenistic time period and how much confidence we can put into our sources. So this is not entirely relevant, as I've just mentioned, to the question of why did the Syrian wars happen or anything like that. Although we will actually touch on it slightly with regards to why the Third Syrian War happened. But rather we are going to look at this to show how much of this time period we don't fully understand. To a point where we still struggle to agree on when certain events happened. And because of recent advances in scholarship, the Third Syrian War is a good way to demonstrate this fact. So this dispute over the chronology of the Third Syrian War comes from an article written by Altai Koshkun titled The War of Brothers, The Third Syrian War and the Battle of Ankyra, which was published um, towards the end of 2018 in this book. It's called The Seleucid Empire 281 to 222 BC, War Within the Family and is edited by Kyle Erickson. In this article, Koshkun argues that the traditional chronology of events leading up to and after the Third Syrian War has been misunderstood. To outline the traditional chronology briefly, as we touched on it earlier, the Third Syrian War began as, as a result of intervention from the Ptolemies in the Seleucid succession crisis on behalf of Berenice Syrah. This happened in 246 BC and was sparked by the death of Antiochus II, which is generally agreed to have happened in July of that year. Then Ptolemy arrived in Antioch at the request of his sister in September and, having found her dead, declared war on the Seleucids. However, Koshkun disputes this as the cause of the war and argues that it was more likely just Ptolemaic propaganda. Koshkun argues that the timeline events does not fit this reason for war, as Ptolemy III had already begun aggressive actions against the Seleucids by late August or early September in 246 BC at the latest, meaning that he had clearly been waiting for a chance to go to war, and his decision had come long before the death of his sister and nephew. It is likely that Ptolemy III began preparing for war following the revolt of the satrap Andragoras in Parthia and his de defeat to the Parni, which had made the Seleucids look weak and fragile. So, the death of their king would have been a prime opportunity to go to war, which is then what happened when Antiochus II died in July 246 BC. This argument suggests that the Third Syrian War, rather than being distinct from other Syrian wars in its cause, was still a war born out of Ptolemaic and Seleucid rivalry and the desire to take control of each other's territory. The Third Syrian War then ended in 241 BC and is followed by the War of Brothers, which has supposedly lasted until the death of Antiochus Hyrax in 227 BC. This war, the War of Brothers, is a civil war between Seleucus II and Antiochus Hyrax, and it's about the succession crisis we talked about earlier. They had a legitimate claim to the throne, so they sought to see this out through conflict. So it's the idea that the War of the Brothers was after the Third Syrian War, and that's been our traditional chronology. However, that is now disputed, and it is thought that perhaps they happened at the same time. So this is the main focus of Koshkun's article, and this is what he tries to present. Koshkun sorts to reorder the chronology of the two wars, then by first examining the written accounts that we have available to us, which show the order of events. So the first one is Justin's Epitone of Pompeius Troas and Porphyry's Chronicle. Koshkun begins by exposing flaws of Justin's account of the conflict between Seleucus II and Antiochus Hyrax, which places the wars sequentially rather than simultaneously. Unfortunately, though, we don't have enough time to really go into the depth of his article and talk about all the great details of the ways he does this. We just do not have time today. However, 
What his conclusion comes to though is after his examination of Justin's work, he realized that it is not focused on an accurate retelling of history in his in its passage, but rather he sought to teach a lesson on brotherly love as part of a moral education. Thus he argues that Justin's work should not be considered as much as of a reliable source for the period as it has often been given credit for, and so his timeline of events should be treated with more suspicion. This leads Koshkun to turn to Porphyry, who has traditionally been discarded in favour of Justin. Now, Porphyry's work is also problematic, mainly due to its fragmentary nature. We just don't have it, really. But Koshkun argues that he is much more reliable source than Justin, mainly due to his more concise and historical recordings of events without the emphasis on morality found in Justin. Due to time constraints, we're just going to have to simplify this a lot. But essentially, through the reading of Porphyry's account of the War Brothers, it becomes obvious that these two wars happened at the same time, rather than the commonly believed chronology that they happened after each other. To try and pick out the main point from Koshkun's argument is that the Battle of Ankara should be used as a key dating point for the war and that whilst Justin's account has often led scholars to place the date of the battle somewhere between 241 to 235 BC, Porphyry's account suggests that it must have happened in the late September or early October in 246 BC, right at the start of the Third Syrian War. Following this dating of the Battle of Ankara to 246 BC, which puts both of the events together, both of the wars are now obviously at the same time. This drastically shifted the traditional chronology of events in Koshka's mind, and made the conclusion that the War of the Brothers began in 246 BC at about the same time of the Third Syrian War, and that it ended with Hyrax's renewal alliance with the Ptolemies in 241 BC where it was thought to originally end in 227 BC when Hyrax died, so we've moved about 20 years. Koshku also argues that all the events attributed to the War of the Brothers that have traditionally been dated after the Third Syrian War can be fit into the time period between 246 and 241 BC, and that whilst relations between Hyrax and Seleucus II were likely not exactly friendly until the death of Hyrax, it can be seen that open hostilities between the two had ended by 241 BC. Now, you're probably all thinking, why is this important to the Syrian wars? Well, it highlights that the great gains by Ptolemy III in the Third Syrian War was not solely due to him being a superior general or military tactician, but rather that Seleucus was weakened and unable to stop Ptolemy. Not because he couldn't muster an effective resistance against Ptolemy, but because he was already doing this against Hyrax. Seleucus was fighting on two fronts against Ptolemy and Hyrax in Asia Minor. This also allows us to realise how complex conflicts and politics were in the Syrian wars, and how my MA dissertation supervisor likes to pull it, it is a real world Game of Thrones. So then to conclude, let's recap over some things. What were the causes of the Syrian wars? Now, I would have to argue it is those three points. It is how the monarchies and the royal families and how they interacted politically. I think the idea of expanding and expansion in the monarchs and empires' minds played a massive role in it. And I also think the reclaiming of land and ha not allowing yourself to lose any territory played another big role in there. And that they had to, get, even if they had lost a lot of land, they had to reclaim it back. Maybe not them, but future monarchs had to do it. So what was the point of the Syrian Wars? Well, I think you can say, really, it was to own the locations of Asia Minor and Kole Syria, at least at the start. But after a few um, decades, it had clearly progressed to more than just the regions, and it had come down to individual pride and greed. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast. If you found this episode interesting, we would really recommend you go and read this book that we talked about earlier, The Seleucid Empire, 281 to 222 BC, War Within the Family, and it's edited by Kyle Erickson. If you want to read an ancient source, we would recommend you read Polybius, The Histories.
If you want to keep updated on news of the podcast, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Just type in AIQ Podcast or Antiquity in Question, we should come up. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can find us on Patreon and become one of our patrons. And as I said earlier, you'll get lovely little benefits with that. So thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.